to lose it all the devil gonna win I'll be giving you the finger sticking out my chin Hey day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here coming to you guys with some more World of Warships content. Today guys we're going to be talking about the Musashi, the tier 9 premium Japanese battleship that went live with update to 0.7.0. The Musashi is the Japanese equivalent to the Missouri in the sense that she costs 750,000 free XP to unlock as opposed to being available for purchase on the store. So yeah, there's quite a lot of grinding involved if you want to get one for yourself. So here we'll go through some stats talk about how she plays and how she compares against these ships that she'll find herself against to see if she's, well, simply worth your time at all in the first place. And spoiler alert, the Masashi sounds great on paper, but she's overall in a really confused place right now. And the best part is it's not really the fault of the ship herself, but more or less the position that the matchmaker puts itself in. Anyway, the Masashi is a Yamato class battleship and is essentially the sister ship of the mighty Yamato battleship that we are all very familiar with. The main selling point point here straight off the bat is that, well, she's a tier 9 Yamato, essentially. She sports the exact same guns as the Yamato, 460mm Type 94 guns that essentially fling armor-piercing minivans at targets. Alongside her firepower is the ability for her to soak a lot of damage for a tier 9 ship, featuring a health pull of 97,300 HP, which takes the record for being the ship with the highest HP out of the box in the tier 9 range, by a significant margin. Her armor is also incredibly impressive, featuring a 400 110mm citadel belt that is nigh impossible to penetrate when angled correctly. Add in her 55% torpedo protection value, which helps to counteract her atrocious AA that we'll talk about later, and she can be a real trooper. Despite the strong citadel armor, she is still very susceptible to high damage when flat out broadsiding due to a very tall profile of said broadside. The superstructure of this ship is also a weak point here due to its very tall profile. It does allow for ships to get hits on the superstructure and potentially penetrate into to the interior of the ship if they aim correctly. She also sports a very similar firing range of 26.5 kilometers, which again for tier 9 is a little bit filthy. Right now the Masashi might sound a bit tad OP for tier 9. What's the catch? Well, it's her AA. AA on this ship is practically non-existent, featuring only 20 emplacements with very low end DPS. You thought the Yamato's AA was bad? Well my friend, the Masashi raises you one up on that one. The trade-off is designed to be a more competent secondary armament, but I would argue against that in practice, but we'll talk about that one in a second. The detection of the Masashi is also 18 kilometers, but you and I both know you could do better than that with some upgrades, which we'll talk about a little bit later as well. So as I said before, the Masashi is something that sounds fantastic on paper, a tier 9 Yamato. I mean, come on, who hasn't wanted to end up in a tier 7 game with a Yamato just to club people? Sounds like a dream come true, really a true credit printer. But in reality, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this ship. Yes, it's a tier 9 that comes with Yamato guns, the largest health pool of any tier 9 ship, and comes with enough range to snipe things across the map with ease. But the problem I have here with this ship is that it is essentially a half-finished Yamato. Seriously, put the two ships right next to each other and the comparison actually looks really funny. That finds itself fighting against Yamatos more often than not. And what I mean by that is that with the way the matchmaker is built currently, as a tier 9 premium, you're going to find yourself very rarely playing as the top tier. And more so playing in games of tier 10 as the mid-tier ship. If it were impossible for the tier 9s to be matched against tier 10s, then this ship would fit right in as an awesome little niche, but that's not how the game is built currently. And versing tier 10 ships isn't exactly the problem with this ship, because the stats for the Masashi for ship combat are still pretty competitive as all hell. The main sacrifice here is the AA. The issue here is that if you really want a Yamato-like ship, then you're really just better off investing your free XP towards the actual Yamato, especially if you already have progress on the IGN battleship line. If my maths is correct, and it might be a tad bit off but not by much, the amount of research required to unlock the Yamato from tier 
1 to tier 10 in a beeline format is 912,150 XP. 750,000 free XP pretty much covers the majority of that. So once again, you are literally just better off hitting the Yamato straight away. If you really have that much free XP lying around and you've made some progress on the IGM battleship line, you can get the Yamato pretty bloody quickly. It just makes more sense economically to go for the Yamato over anything. Yes, the Musashi is a competitive ship, but the investment that is required to unlock it when you compare it against what it will be going against, aka ships like the Yamato, it just makes it really hard to invest. So it kind of raises the question, why dump so much free experience into the Masashi when you can put it towards unlocking a Yamato, where you will always find yourself being in the top tier and in all fairness, with a ship that is quite simply finished. Well, the Masashi does have one thing going for it, that being the fact that it is a tier 9 premium, so if you can perform well in the Yamato and translate those skills to the Masashi, then you're going to print credits like no tomorrow. If you have an abundance of free XP lying around with nowhere to dump it and you already own a Yamato, and you want to possibly run the chance of getting a tier 9 Yamato into a tier 7 game and start clubbing poor seals, then this ship could be fun for you. But then again, I feel as though you could get the same experience out of being a Yamato clubbing tier 8s, but hey, what do I know? But irregardless of my thoughts on the worth of the Masashi, this is a review, so we will talk about how to play her and how to get the most out of her. How do you go about playing her? How do you go about building her? Well, personally, a loadout that I've found to be incredibly effective is Auxiliary Armaments Modification 1, because, well, your main guns are basically already invincible, and you need all the AA guns you can get. Damage Control System Mod 1, Aiming Systems Mod 1 for all those juicy deletions, Damage Control Systems Mod 2, Concealment System System mod 1 and main battery main battery mod 3. Main battery mod 3 and concealment system mod 1 are the highlights for me personally. The third main battery mod decreases your reload time considerably because what we all really needed was a battleship that fires 460mm shells every 25 seconds. The extra traverse speed is also greatly needed on this ship, as the turrets will lag behind when the ship is moving at full turn, so having that little bit of extra traverse speed is going to help you out big time when making those harsh turns. As for the captain skills, I recommend taking preventative maintenance, high alert, basics of survivability, and concealment expert to start you off. After that, grabbing things like superintendent for that extra repair party and basic and advanced fire training to help you squeeze out everything of your AA is recommended. Help, if you go with the right loadout, you can get yourself your secondaries out to a 10.6 kilometer range, which ain't that shabby. When taking all of the captain skills and modules into account, the build really aims to give the Masashi some stealth capabilities at range that allow for her to decide the terms of engagement, all the while increasing her survivability against torpedo and HE attacks. With your large profile and limited AA, conditional damage is going to be your worst nightmare. The build aims to keep you off the radar as much as possible to avoid alpha damage, and when you are on the radar, the skill are ready to counter anything that hits you. When it comes to playstyle, it's really quite simple. Play like a Yamato. Focus on angling your armor to maximize your health pool, and don't overextend into situations that sees you broadsiding enemy battleships. Sure, the Masashi comes with amazing broadside armor, but considering how tall the Masashi's broadside is, it's a very big target, which is also very easy to penetrate when an easy shot is presented. If you find yourself knife fighting enemy battleships, time your salvos between enemy salvos to make the most of your third gun without risking too much damage. The turning circle on the Masashi, while not fantastic overall, is a little bit better than its tier 9 equivalent from the United States, so use this to bring the third gun into action and then quickly re-angle before the enemy can get heavy hits. Do plan ahead with the ship as best as you can. The ship's bulkiness, its turning radius, while yes it is good for a tier 9 battleship, it is still a battleship, in combination with the turret traverse speed means that if you plan to cut and run, your turrets are not going to be able to keep up with your crosshairs when you're in the middle of a full-fledged turn. This encourages you to bow in and tank damage when required, as opposed to making a full 180 degree turn. So taking time to plan out how you're going to approach a situation is key in the ship. Make sure you communicate with your allies and have adequate support when you need it. And if you see an aircraft carrier, well, pray. Pray that they don't target you. Oh, who am I kidding? They'll target you. You're basically a floating pile of 97,000 damage XP for them. They're gonna go for you. So guys, in short, the Masashi is a very competitive ship. It's a tier 9 Yamato, which is just great fun if you happen to be the top tier of a game. 
With that said though, with the rate in which the Masashi finds itself taking on tier 10s, you are simply going to be better off investing that 750,000 free XP into a Yamato to get a more complete package. Once again, I enjoyed playing the Masashi here for the most part, it was a fun ship. But right now, from a serious point of view, it just doesn't make sense to pick it up over a Yamato. Sure, if you've got a Yamato and want to run the chance of getting into tier 7 games with a Yamato-like ship, then this one's going to be an absolute dream come true for you. But then again, that's still a very rare occurrence and an occurrence that must be savoured when it happens. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, a backhand of that like button would be greatly appreciated, and say you find yourself enjoying the video and you're new to the channel, backhand that subscribe button whilst you're at it to keep up to date with the content in which I'm releasing here. Guys, if you have played the Masashi and you've got any tips and tricks, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. If I missed out on anything here, or if you've got a different loadout that you enjoy to run, plop it in the comment section down below, and I'll be sure to basically offer my opinion on your loadout accordingly. Once again, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I'll be seeing you all next time. Have a good one.